Good morning. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year? There we go. I know it's six days old already and the, the shine has worn off, but... Uh, welcome to Onalaska United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Park Hutter. It is a delight to be with you as we begin this year uh, with worship and praise. Uh, we want to share some thanks and some uh, uh, community announcements before we begin. Uh, first of all, uh, many of you are aware of our St. Nick Fund. It's uh, a, a collection that we take up to assist uh, folks that are associated with the church in times of need. Uh, and that just happens quietly in the background throughout the year. People come to me and, and uh, let me know if there's a need, and uh, we uh, help them as we're able to. And usually you guys don't hear about that, but uh, I actually got a thank you note to share with you today. Um, uh, many of you remember Earl and Sue Sanders and their daughter Lauren, who had the terrible car accident a couple of years ago. Uh, Lauren is uh, recovering well, but still not able to be back to work. And in December, we helped uh, Lauren with her utility payments. And she writes, uh, OUMC friends, your gift was unexpected, but definitely appreciated. Recovery is still an uphill battle. Your prayers and thoughts help brighten my way. Thank you, and Lauren. So um, we'll put this out on the board, and uh, again, thank you guys for the ministry you do. It makes a big difference to people who really need it uh, when they need it. Uh, coming up this week, uh, Tuesday evening, is our community dinner. I uh, hope that you can come and enjoy that meal with us. Also, as we begin the year, some of our committee meetings are getting shuffled around. Our staff parish committee meeting, uh, instead of being the first Tuesday, which was New Year's Eve, nobody really wanted to come here that night, uh, will be during the community dinner at 5.30. And our finance committee is having a special meeting at 6.30 on Tuesday evening. Uh, Wednesday, our normal youth activities and children's activities start up again with puppets and soar and the soar dinner. Um, this next Saturday is our annual church planning retreat. Uh, and we all always invite our church leaders, but that is open to anybody. It's going to be here this year, and our focus is going to be on uh, connecting with our community. We've got a guest speaker, Reverend Lori Losey, coming in. She's an expert in this area, having uh, worked in both Ohio and in the Wisconsin Conference on this subject. That starts at 8.30 in the morning and goes till about 3 in the afternoon. Um, we do a potluck lunch and we provide some breakfast snacks and things. If you're interested in coming, and I really would encourage you because this is a great way to uh, help us as we shape our plans for the year, then you should contact the office this week by Wednesday. Uh, looking further ahead, on uh, Wednesday the 16th, um, uh, we help organize and participate in a program called Community Conversations that takes place at English Lutheran down in La Crosse, uh, and that goes on uh, monthly. And it is, usually they have a guest speaker or a panel on a particular subject, and then they have an opportunity for people to ask questions, and there's a light lunch served uh, for donation. This coming, uh, uh, or this month, on the 16th, the topic is faith and business, and Mark Bertrang is going to be one of the panelists. So uh, if you're interested in uh, hearing how uh, faith principles can shape business practices, then I'd encourage you to uh, go down on December the 16th to English Lutheran Church at noon and check that out. Uh, on December, sorry, January the 19th, two Saturdays from now, uh, we are hosting uh, uh, leadership training and workshops uh, for multiple churches here at our uh, church, and that is Saturday morning. Um, there are some topics you might be interested in. There's a blue poster with a big upward arrow on the bulletin boards by the office. Check it out. If you're interested, then uh, sign up in the office. Okay, let's see. We've got some el something else coming up toward the end of the month, and uh, Craig, you want to tell us about that? Can I get number 16, the brown microphone? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, obviously, I've had soup supper and summer camp on my mind. Got out of the shower this morning, put on the wrong clothes. <laughs> so January 26th is going to be the soup supper, um, 3.30 to 6.30. Tickets are 7.50. All the proceeds of this goes towards the scholarships for summer camp. And also, we will have mittens there again this year for those who didn't buy enough of them last year. And uh, after service, we will be selling tickets out back in the North X. 
So please buy tickets. And one other thing is I'll have a sign-up poster by tomorrow up for desserts for those that can donate desserts for us. Thank you. And Craig, what are the soups this year? Chicken noodle and vegetable beef soup. Right, you just you pop open the cans and dump these in the pot. Uh, and, no. Yeah. No, no, I, uh, I think there's some homemade noodles in there. Uh, low greasy fingers for uh, deboning chicken because they're whole boiled chickens, deboned. Might get a bone in there, so be careful when you eat. Mm. <laughs> homemade from scratch, so thank you. And thanks to the men's group for putting this together. Coincidentally, the summer camp catalog just got published. Uh, we've got a few advanced copies and we'll have more uh, soon, but uh, uh, on pages five and pages 10 of the catalog, you can see some of our kids. Uh, we almost always have kids in there because we send so many kids to summer camp, uh, thanks partially to the men's group and the scholarships. So again, well done, church. Um, just uh, to wrap up here, uh, if you have children with you this morning, we've got some options for you. Uh, we have a nursery down the hallway, if uh, that would be helpful to you. And we also have this wonderful play area over here, and kids are welcome to come and uh, play and worship and see what's going on. Uh, it's a, a great way for them to be part of the service, and we don't mind the noise uh, or their curiosity. Uh, also, in the program, you'll find their blue cards. Uh, these are for attendance, so please put your name on here. Uh, if you have a prayer request, this is a great place to share that with us. If you are a guest, then uh, uh, hang on to this. Usually they go in the offering plate, but guests uh, take this after the service back to the welcome area by the coffee and TV, and we will swap this for a gift, and uh, uh, we'll enjoy the chance to get to know you a little bit better. All right, we're going to greet each other with the peace and grace of Christ. Uh, this is often a handshaking, but in this season of sniffles, if you want a fist bump, that's okay too. Good Please join with me in the call to worship this morning as on the screen or in your bulletin. God of mystery, in the darkness of your world, your light shines with grace and truth. Open the eyes of our hearts to the glory of your love. Speak your words of truth and joy. May the mystery revealed in Jesus draw us closer to you. May the wonder of your love Fill us with wisdom and peace, and we rejoice in your presence. Teach us to seek justice and righteousness. Fill our hearts to overflowing with your love, your glory, your hope. Amen. And then let's join in our opening song, Once in Royal David City, number uh, 250 in the Red Hymnal.
You may be seated. Our scripture reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all of the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. When, when, then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for this child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they, went, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had, been, they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child lay. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overjoyed, overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, <coughs> and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Thus ends the reading. If the kids would like to come up for the children's message. Well, good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing this morning? Good. Did you have a nice Christmas? Good New Year? Excellent. Excellent. Um, well, this morning, we're going to talk about um, a, a part of the Christmas story. Are you guys familiar with the wise men or the magi? Yeah, you know a little bit about the magi? Um, the magi, if you don't know about them, they were a lot of fun at parties because they could do these cool magic tricks. Like, do you guys want to see one? Yeah? Okay. I've got this, this regular string here, just a normal string. Do you guys want to check it out? You can feel it, touch it, and just make sure that there's nothing funny going on with that string. Right? It's just normal. Yep. Okay. And then I've got this magic blue box here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the string through the box, and I'm going to say the magic words, abracadabra, and I've just cut the string into two pieces. And now, I say the magic words again, abracadabra, and it's back in one piece. Check it out. What do you think? I think I know how this looks. You think you know how it works? Shh, this is my show, not yours. <laughs> it's magic, it's magic. There's, a, a magician doesn't tell their secrets, right? <laughs> you might be right though. Yeah, so, so I think that's what the Magi were like, right? They were like magicians that did cool tricks, or maybe, maybe not. No, no, I'm getting some no's from the audience here. I think I might be wrong about that. Um, the Magi, do you, do you know what the Magi were actually like, the wise men? What do you guys think? Yeah, John? They were very wise men, yep, yep, that's a good literal description of them. Uh, and did they, did they live in Bethlehem where Jesus was born? No, they, they traveled from a long ways away, didn't they? 
So they were some wise people that lived a long ways away from Jesus, and they were searching the stars and searching the sky, and they said that they had found a message in the stars that told them that someone very important, a new king, was going to be born in Bethlehem. And so they got on their camels, and they rode all the way for days and days to Bethlehem to go and meet this new king, and they found Jesus there lying in the manger, and they were just amazed, and they worshiped Jesus. They were so amazed to see this, this king as a baby right in front of them. Now, you know what's interesting is that um, there were other people that lived in Bethlehem too. Like, Jesus had neighbors there. There were even people that lived next door to where Jesus was born, and we don't really have stories about them coming and worshiping um, just the shepherds, but we don't have stories about anyone else coming and being amazed at Jesus. But these people who were so far away because they were searching, um, God showed them a sign and showed them where Jesus was going to be. So um, sometimes, sometimes we don't see signs of God and what God is doing around us if we're not looking. So I have something I want you guys to try here, okay? I want you to close your eyes. Keep them closed. No peeking, okay? Are they closed? Yeah? Okay. Uh, now I want you to describe the stained glass window that's here in our church for me. Tell me what it, what it looks like. It's a bunch of different colors. Like what colors? There's some blues and reds and yellows. Mm-hmm. What else? What kind of shapes are in there? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of swirling around the cross. You guys are pretty good at this. Okay, now I want you to open your eyes and take a look at it. How'd you do? Yeah, yeah, I think you guys did pretty well. It's a lot of shapes kind of swirling around the cross, some reds and blues and yellows. You guys did really well. Do you think that if you had studied it before, if you had been looking at it really closely, that you could have described it in even more detail when your eyes were closed? Yeah, I bet you could have. Yeah, because when we're looking for things, that's when we, we really notice what God is doing. So um, if, if we're looking for signs of God all around us, we're going to see things like um, beautiful colors and designs and people helping each other and loving each other. And we're going to see amazing sunsets over the bluffs. And you'll notice your family and your home more and all these beautiful things that God does for us. Um, because God loves us so much. So when we're looking, when we're searching like the wise men, that's when we're going to see more of God all around us. All right, let's go ahead and pray. God, we want to thank you so much that you are with us all the time, and that you love us always, no matter what. And God, we pray that you would um, help us to be searching for signs of you. Help us to see the great things that you are doing in our lives and in the world all around us. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up, guys. Well, often during our services, we like to uh, uh, pause and uh, share a God moment, a, a testimony or witness of where God is at work in uh, the life of a person or in the life of our community. And as we begin the, the new year, I think it's probably a good thing for us to go back and take another look at our mission and vision and then talk about um, what we're going to be doing this year as a community, as a congregation, uh, to uh, live that out. So uh, you guys should remember our mission. Let's say it together. The mission of Onalaska UMC is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. So we're really about making disciples, and that can mean uh, working on our own discipleship as we seek to know more and grow closer to and love more like Jesus Christ. Uh, it can also mean uh, meeting new people and inviting them into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, transforming the world is what happens when we become more loving, uh, when we love our neighbors uh, better, uh, and as we go out and serve the world, uh, the world becomes a little bit more like the kingdom of heaven that we pray will come on earth. All right, so what is our vision? How do we make this happen? Uh, let's go to the next slide. Uh, let's uh, read this together. Our, mission, or our vision is to love unconditionally, 
Prepare our hearts and minds and hands, serve in all the ways that we can, and celebrate God in all that we do. Uh, and again, this is kind of our DNA. This is what we as a church uh, uh, hold close to us and how we work on making disciples and transforming the world. We love unconditionally. People that walk through this door, we love them. Uh, we prepare ourselves. This is part of becoming better disciples. Uh, we uh, prepare our hearts through worship. We prepare our minds through small groups and Sunday school. We prepare our hands uh, through serving and practicing. We serve in all the ways that we can. That's both within the church and in our outreach and missions projects because when we go out and serve people is where we uh, meet Jesus Christ and it's where we have a chance to uh, encounter other people, share the love of Christ with them and help them to become disciples. And we do this joyfully, we celebrate God. Everything that we do should be something that we enjoy and that we celebrate. So. This is familiar to you guys, uh, but what are we gonna do about this specifically this year? Um, at our leadership uh, planning retreat last year, uh, we lined up our goals for the next four years, our, our priorities for each year. And this year, our strategic goal as a church is to connect with our community. Now, uh, each of us is connected with our community in different ways. You know the people you work with, you know your neighbors, you know the folks that go to school uh, with you or with your kids, um, and you know the people that you see at restaurants and things. You probably know the folks at Quick Trip where you stop for gas. You probably have a, a clerk you see regularly. Uh, as a church, uh, we need to be doing the same things. We need to build upon your knowledge of the community and make sure that we are going to meet and serve those people. It's also easy sometimes for us to not see people that aren't on our beaten path, uh, the uh, areas of town that we don't drive through often. Um, and for us, this is a big area. Uh, we're really a regional church. Uh, we're here located here in Alaska, but we have people uh, who come from Holman and from La Crosse and West Salem and from other areas around us. So uh, when we say community, we mean community. And we're gonna be looking to learn from you, uh, to help you learn and to see the community as well. And uh, I hope that you'll come along on this journey and help us see how we can be making disciples and transforming the world right around us. Uh, again, this is part of uh, what we're focusing on at our leadership uh, uh, planning retreat this coming Saturday. So if this interests you, then sign up and come join us. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and move forward with our prayer of confession this morning. You'll find this in the bulletin or on the overhead. God of starlight, shine your love into the darkness of our lives. Preoccupied with ourselves, we forget the needs of others. We participate in systems that oppress. We accept violence as a way of life. We fail to respond to the cry of others. May your love fall upon us like rain on the moon grass. May your love wash away our indifference and water the tender shoots of our care and compassion. Nourished in the sunlight of your love, may we grow into people who live in righteousness and work for justice for all our children. Open our eyes that we may see. Hear now our silent confessions. In Jesus Christ, God has revealed the mystery that brings grace and forgiveness. The light of God's love transforms us so, so that we may act with boldness and confidence. Amen.
So today is Epiphany, and it's the end of the 12-day Christmas season. Uh, traditionally, this is the Sunday when we remember the visit of the three wise men who came looking for Jesus about two years after his birth. Uh, Epiphany has also become a general word, meaning an insight or a revelation, uh, an eye-opening experience, or seeing something new all of a sudden. It comes from the old Greek word epiphanen, which means uh, to reveal. And this year we're going to... Actually, I'm, I'm having a hard time reading my notes this morning. I, I think I put my glasses down somewhere, and I'm, I guess I'm more used to my bifocals than I realized. Oh. Did I leave them up there? Oh, uh, <laughs> great. Um, well, that's better. I can see clearly now. <laughs> uh, I have to confess that my wife thinks that I suffer from MPB. Um, it's a degenerative disease, common, uh, it first manifests among teenage boys and gets worse with, worse with age. You know, uh, MPB, male pattern blindness. <laughs> uh, for whatever reason, I have a hard time seeing things that aren't where I expect them to be. If you tidy up the living room and move my book from the end table to the shelf, the book becomes invisible. I can't find it. If you rearrange the cupboards, I can't find the red pan. If you hang a jacket on top of my coat, my coat disappears. Actually, this morning I put on a long sleeve clergy shirt to come to church, and then when I was putting on my coat, I realized I actually had on a short sleeve clergy shirt that was hanging in the wrong part of my closet. But I didn't notice when I put it on. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, I try to see things, I really do. I will, when I'm looking for something, I will go through the whole house, room by room, looking, okay, at the table, the couch, the shelf, the bed, um, trying to find my laptop. And then I'll go through again, because I know it's got to be there, and it's going to be embarrassing when I ask my wife. And then when I don't see it still, I'll ask Annalisa, and she will not even look up from her game of civilization, and she'll say, didn't you leave it on the dining room table? <laughs> and sure enough, when I go back to the dining room, it's sitting right there in plain sight. I just looked past it two or three times. All right, true confessions. Anybody else here suffer from male pattern blindness? <laughs> All right. Anybody know a male pattern blindness sufferer? <laughs> I've seen a lot more hands for the second round there. Huh. I mean, joking aside, we all have our blind spots, right? Sometimes familiarity makes us blind to the obvious, like when we walk or drive by the same people every day and we don't even really notice them anymore. Other times we're willfully blind, like when somebody or something makes us uncomfortable and so we, we try not to make eye contact. I'm apparently <coughs> finger fumbly too. So confirmation bias can, can really put the blinders on us. We pay attention to things we're interested in, uh, like say when you buy a new car and suddenly you notice that everybody else is driving that same car and you just had not seen those before. Uh, we see what we want to see, like when we listen to the same news station all the time and we hear only what we agree with. And in today's scripture, there's some serious uh, PPB going on, power pattern blindness. King Herod and the religious authorities are powerful and they are blind to the Son of God who has appeared in their own backyard. And I mean they are really blind. The village of Bethlehem is less than six miles from the capital city of Jerusalem. An army of angels sang to a crowd of shepherds who then told everybody that they saw uh, what they had heard and seen. And a bright new star had appeared in the sky and nobody in the king's palace noticed this? The religious leaders were looking for a Messiah. They were looking for a holy prophet who was gonna be thundering out the word of God and calling down fire from the sky. They weren't looking for a cooing baby born to an unwed, unwed mother. They had power pattern blindness. Herod and his advisors, well, they were on the lookout for challengers to the throne. They were looking for warriors and politicians. They were not looking for a, a toddling peasant boy. They had power pattern blindness. 
Now, kings and priests, the people looking intently for God to appear, or who should have been looking intently for, the God, uh, for God to appear, were blind to the Son of God as he actually showed up. He wasn't what they expected, and so they couldn't see him. They couldn't recognize him. What it took to see Jesus as the Son of God was fresh eyes, new perspective, an outsider's view. What it took to see Jesus was apparently three wise men from afar. Now, these wise men were probably from Persia or Babylon, hundreds of miles away. They were probably not Jews, although they may have been familiar with some Jewish scripture and traditions from the diaspora, the Jewish people who had spread out around the world. But what they did know was that they had seen a bright new star, a heavenly herald of something big, probably a new king, and they had come to see what new power had entered the world. They didn't know much, and in fact, they had to ask Herod and his political and religious advisors for help. And the Jerusalem scholars, well, they just quoted well-known words from the prophet Micah and Samuel. The difference is that the wise men actually heard these things that the uh, religious scribes shared, and then they go and take a look. Because the wise men aren't necessarily looking for a warrior king or for a flashing prophet, they can see in Mary and Joseph's little two-year-old boy toddling around, getting into trouble, trying out new words, the miracle of God's presence on earth. They can hear and take seriously the eyewitness testimony of Bethlehem locals who remember the angels and the shepherds on the night of Jesus' birth. And from their fresh perspective, with their fresh eyes, with their outsider's view, the wise men can see the little boy Jesus, as the song We Three Kings suggests, is king and God and sacrifice. Now, friends, spiritual blindness is a creeping curse. It afflicts us all. Maybe once we saw Jesus at work in our lives, but we don't really see him anymore. We don't see him because we're only looking for the Jesus that we knew once upon a time. But God is ever changing and ever moving and we're sometimes blind to God doing a new thing. All things are created by God and uh, in Genesis, God says that all things are good. All people are created in the image of God and we all carry that divine spark and yet, we are too often blind to those around us because they're so familiar, they've become invisible. Like our neighbor mowing the yard or the secretary at the desk. We're too blind to the people around us because they make us uncomfortable. The invisible people who are poor or who look and act differently or who think differently. When we look only for the God that we expect, we are blind to the God who shows up every day all around us in the unexpected. When we look only at the people who look like us, the people that we like, we are blind to the neighbors that we are called to love. Fortunately, we follow a savior who specializes in curing blindness. Jesus, who put mud in the eyes of a blind man to restore his sight. Jesus, who helped the scales to fall from the eyes of Paul the persecutor. This same Jesus can take away the dimness of our own eyes and souls. This year, Onalaska United Methodist Church is going to be looking. We're going to be taking a new and fresh look at our community. We're going to be taking a new and fresh look at our neighbors. We're going to be looking for God who is already there in the city around us, looking for the people who need to hear the good news of Jesus Christ from us, looking for the people who need to experience the love of God that we can share with them. Friends, Jesus Christ is a cure for blindness. He is the light that is so clear that it pierces the darkness and illuminates the world. In his light, we see light. Open your eyes. We would see Jesus. Amen. Please join me in singing number 254, We Three Kings.
Amen. As we enter into our prayer time, what prayers do we want to lift up today? Okay, Caitlin had her wisdom teeth out on Friday. Can you tell, is she less wise? Okay, so prayers for Matt, who's out skiing, and for Jennifer, who was diagnosed with breast cancer, but the, looks pretty good right now. So, Okay, prayers for Deborah, who's got a recurrence of kidney cancer. Okay, uh, prayers for our military and for those who serve us on a daily basis. And uh, I'm going to extend that right now and pray for um, uh, those government workers who are on, are on furlough right now. It's difficult not to know um, how they're going to meet their bills, and it's difficult for people that depend on services they provide. So, prayers for Harriet, who's having health problems. Um, I would uh, also lift up uh, Jean Fisher, um, who uh, had a fall and is uh, uh, having to look at some different living arrangements. So please keep him in prayers as well. Uh, prayers for a friend beginning to deal with dementia. So uh, prayers for Barbara Martin Stanley and her family, um, her son uh, Reggie's uh, mother-in-law um, passed away very unexpectedly December 23rd. The funeral was just yesterday and I know it, was, it, was a, it has been a challenge for the family. All right, let's go ahead and bow our heads. Lord God, as we come to you in uh, prayer this morning, uh, we come uh, standing on the, uh, in the first few days of a new year and thinking about uh, our hopes for last year and uh, our dreams uh, and the challenges that we faced. Not everything worked out like we wanted it to. Um, in some cases, we were surprised by by bad news or terrible events. Um, in other cases, we were, we were blessed in ways that we didn't see coming, uh, and uh, we celebrated uh, many things that we had looked forward to. Uh, Lord, uh, we come from that year into this year, again, uh, dreaming, planning, hoping, again, recognizing that sometimes life does not go according to our plans. Uh, we ask that you would help guide us in the year to come. Uh, help us to accept uh, what comes our way uh, in the peace that only you can give. Help us to rejoice uh, when we have to, things to rejoice over. Help us uh, in times of trouble to feel your presence. Lord, we lift up those who've been mentioned here this morning and we commend them to your care, uh, trusting you to bring healing, to bring peace, to bring uh, uh, justice where it needs to happen. Uh, Lord, for those blessings that we've enjoyed, uh, family, friends, um, and other wonderful things, uh, we give you thanks. Help us always to know and to trust that you are at work. Help us to be patient, waiting for you to bring good even out of bad situations. Help us uh, to share your love with others that, so that they too may know your peace. We ask these things in your name, and we join in the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We have a chance to share our gifts and offerings with the Lord. I'm going to invite the ushers to come around. If you prefer to give electronically, you can go to onalaskaumc.org slash give.
O Lord, you are worthy to receive all glory, honor, and praise. For by your will, all things are created and have their being. Bless now these gifts that we offer in thanksgiving for your great faithfulness. Amen. For those who might be guests in the Methodist tradition, communion is open to all. You don't need to be a member of this church or this denomination. Uh, If you want to encounter Jesus Christ and you seek that grace, then you are welcome to come and participate. We take communion by intinction, so when you come forward, uh, uh, you can come on either side uh, with your hands together, take a piece of bread, uh, dip it in the cup of juice, and receive both elements together. If you prefer gluten-free bread or uh, to use one of the smaller cups, those are available as well. And our Stephen ministers or I will be uh, waiting on either side if you would like to pray, if you would like to be anointed with oil this morning, we can do that as well. And we'd be happy uh, to take that moment with you. On the night that Jesus Christ gave himself up for us, he took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, sharing it with his disciples and friends, saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is given For you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to God his Father, and then he shared it with his disciples and friends, saying, drink from this, all of you. This cup is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it remembrance of me. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, we come to your table today. We have heard this invitation many times over our lives. Uh, This is part of the fabric of our worship and part of the fabric of our faith, that we can come and share this meal together. We look at the table and we see bread and juice Lord, we ask that you would open our eyes, open our hearts, open our faith, and help us to see more than what we take for granted. Help us to look beyond the bread and the juice and to see your body and your blood. Help us to remember that this uh, feast, this sharing of blessing and love and grace is made possible because not just of your birth as a baby uh, and your life and ministry, but because of your willing sacrifice, your death on the cross. Help us to remember your resurrection, that you rose victorious over sin and death, and uh, in your victory, we too have victory. Help us to see that uh, as we come together, as brothers and sisters, as children of God, As we receive your body and your blood, we are woven into the body of Christ. Lord, we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon all of us gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us your body and your blood so that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by your blood. Through your Holy Spirit, make us one with yourself, one with each other, and one in service to all the world until you come again in final victory and we feast together at your heavenly banquet. We ask these things in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, we're going to serve those who serve us and then we'll invite you to come forward. So, guys. We invite our musicians and those who serve to come, and then we invite you.
heard the bells on Epiphany Day. That means I'm only running about five minutes late right now. So it's not too bad. This new year, maybe I'll get this thing back into an hour. We'll see. It's hard to contain all that blessing. Uh, thank you for coming and worshiping with us today. It has been a privilege to uh, be here to praise God with you and to serve you. Uh, if you are seeking prayer, if you'd like to get together, uh, please give me a call this week. If you're interested in this church where we're always seeking to see God in the people and the community around us, then talk to the folks that you're sitting with and they can share some of the ways that God has surprised them in their ministry here in the church and in the community. We're going to close now with a final hymn. We'll have a blessing and we'll go forth. Friends, we have good news to share with the world. Christ was born to save. Christ is in the world today. Go out looking for Jesus Christ. Go out bearing Jesus Christ. Be blessed. Be a blessing. Amen. Thank you.